So this hour we will talk about some uh, protocols that deals with uh, multiple access problem. Um, as we mentioned before, um, in a broadcast channel, there are several uh, interface cards want to uh, send signal out. But uh, how do we coordinate those um, signals? Because uh, we know a signal may interfere interference with each other. So uh, basically, in the broadcast channel, only one interface card can uh, send signal out. Otherwise, the signal will um, collision will be messed up. So uh, those interface cards should have some uh, mechanism, uh, some protocols to uh, determine which interface card can send out signal or uh, should uh, stay quiet. Okay, so um, right here, um, usually we have two types of a link, uh, uh, but currently uh, in this chapter we will talk about broadcast links. Okay, those uh, the, the, the second bullet. Okay, uh, the broadcast is uh, because they share uh, wired uh, or media, uh, wireless media. So uh, when when they when one of the interface card send the signal out all the other interface card nearby or in the same subnet all of them will hear the signal that is what we use this word um, broadcast okay um, for example uh, in a old ethernet okay as we mentioned in, in chapter one you can connect your PC to the main cable of Ethernet and because of the uh, physical um, uh, characteristic of uh, wired cop uh, copper uh, coppers so all the signal will be transmitted to all the wired or the interfaces okay and again um, we mentioned uh, HFC Okay, which is a uh, fabric and cable, uh, hybrid fabric and the cable system in cable network. Okay, again we have a main cable, right? So uh, all the household will can uh, use a splitter to connect to the main cable. So when a uh, signal transmitted in the cable, all the household will receive the signals. Okay, that is um, the nature of uh, cable. Okay. And again, in a wireless uh, environment, if one of the interface cards send, send um, electromagnet magnet, magnetic signal out, um, all the other nearby interface can hear the signal, right? So uh, most of the time, um, in our environment, in our uh, network, we use such kind of broadcasted um, medium, okay? So we have to deal with uh, the multiple access problem in such kind of broadcast um, environment. But uh, when we uh, the other one is called point to point. Okay, there are some point to po to point protocol. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the, the the figure I draw here. Okay, we we talk about switch, right? Switch is a layer two device which can connect all the other device. For example, we have two PCs and one notebook, uh, and we connect them together by using a switch and as we mentioned before um, switch is a layer 2 device so when uh, the notebook okay the blue one they, they send uh, some signal out actually this switch will pass will forward this signal to all the other ports so theoretically all the other PCs the, uh, the, the, the red one and the green one they can receive the signal sent by the laptop. Okay, but the switch helps to do so, helps the, the signal to, to, to perform such kind of broadcast. Okay, but actually when you take a look closely at the the the, the, the blue links, the green links and the red links, um, you can see that only two ports Right, only two ports are there and connected by one single um, blue link, green link, and red link. So basically, there's no other interfaces in blue link, green link, and red links. So we can say that it is a kind of 
point-to-point -point communication because, because in this specific link, for example, the blue link, only two blue interfaces are connected to the link and they can only hear each other. So no, they, they will not share this specific links and channel with some other interfaces. So in this case, they are point to point. Um, maybe 20 years ago, uh, we have dial up um, modem, right? So we use a phone line to connect your uh, modem to the, uh, to the ISP. That is one of the point to point environment. Okay, because no other uh, interfaces or no other uh, device are on the phone link between you, your modem, and your, your uh, ISP. Okay, but, but right here, this switch will help those blue links, green link, and red link to forward the signal to all the other ports. So basically, uh, we, we, we will see this uh, we will view this switch as a broadcast environment because this switch will helps to do broadcasting okay but actually they have three individual point to, to point link but the switch will help them to do such kind of broadcast things so uh usually in 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 um in then we, we will we will view a switch as a transparent uh device it will uh Basically, it's very similar to to this one to 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 this one, to this um, cable Ethernet. Okay, because they all do broadcast, but switch delivery do uh, broadcasting. But um, the shared wire, the cable Ethernet, they do broadcast by nature. Okay. So uh, we have a problem here is. Uh, we, 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 we share a single uh, broadcast channel by several different uh, network interface card. So uh, when two or more interface card try to uh, simultaneously transmit um, signal, so the result will be interference. So we call that collision, signal collision. If node receive two or more signals at the same time. So we need a multiple access protocol Okay, or, or say MAC protocol, multiple access control protocol. Okay, we need a MAC, MAC protocol to, um, those protocols should be uh, a distributed algorithm that determine how nodes share this uh, broadcast channel to determine when a node can transmit or when uh, the other node cannot. Um, but it is a paradigm that um, when we coordinate those uh, nodes in a shared media, um, I don't know how to communicate with each other without uh, cause, uh, it, without uh, interference. But they have to do coordination, right? They have to do coordination, but they don't know how to do coordination because they don't know how to access the channel. So there is a paradigm that um, communication about channel sharing must use the channel itself. So uh, because we don't have other band channel for coordination, so it's a very difficult problem to solve a multiple access problem. Okay, so um, let's see how smart uh, computer scientists try to solve such kind of uh, problem. Even if we don't know how to access the channel, we can do such kind of coordination to uh, share the usage of the channel. So an idea, um, a Mac protocol, um, it should be like that uh, given a multiple access channel of rate R bit per second. Okay, so um, the ideal protocol should do so. The first one is uh, when one node wants to transmit, it can send at rate R bit per second. So if any one of the node trying to uh, do transmission, it uses the full speed of this communication channel, okay, R. Uh, the second one is about fairness. Uh, in the long, long run, when N nodes want to transmit and uh, uh, each node can roughly get uh, R over N B per second. So that means this MAC protocol should uh, should be fair okay should be fair so no one no any 
node can preempt or has higher priority or uh, can uh, occupy the channel. Okay, the protocol should be fair. Okay, the third one is through decentralized. Uh, uh, it and uh, for an idea ideal um, Mac protocol, uh, we hope no special node is needed to do such kind of coordination. It would be rather we we develop a decentralized algorithm. So we don't need a centralized node or a special node to do such a such kind of coordination of transmission. And we don't want to do a clock synchronization or a time slot because uh, to synchronize all the nodes in a subnet is, is it the cost is very high. So it would be better to design a first decentralized algorithm. Okay? So that everyone can access the channel without a coordination row. Okay? The fourth one is simple. Okay, that is uh, um, uh, the ideal multiple access protocol. Uh, and uh, in this in this class we will introduce three different uh, um, Mac protocol. We, we mean types, three three different types of protocol. Channel partitioning, random access, and tech turns. And but actually um in Wi-Fi or in Ethernet, we use uh, random access to uh, to access the channel. So uh it is more complex. So I would like to introduce channel partition and tech turns first, and then we talk about what is random access. Okay. So the first one is channel partition. Actually, we have talked about um such this uh, concept before um tdma okay ma stands for multiple assets because we have multiple uh interface card in a subnet and they use time division td to access the channel so uh take a look at this, this figure uh, for example we have six different interface card nodes interface card and in this subnet and we can simply just divide the time by using six time slot okay and we do run robin okay but uh it apparently uh it is very simple but um it is not the best way to share a channel because uh, maybe we have for example if we have one more uh interface car enters this subnet and then we, we, we need to inform everyone that uh, we currently we have seven time slot okay and uh, everyone every network interface card in the subnet should uh, should be synchronized okay so we know when first uh, the first uh, interface card can transmit and when the second one can transmit and so on and so forth something like that so um and again there are some other uh shortcomings for example um take a look at this figure if um Network interface card number two uh, does not have any frame to transmit. And then the, the number two time slot will be idle, right? So it wastes the the capacity of this. this uh, it waste, the utilization will, will not be high. So, uh, but it, it is one of the way to, to share channel, right? We call TDMA, time division multiple assets. Okay, this is quite straightforward. Okay, and the other one we have talked what we we talk it uh we talk about before which is called frequency division multiple assets FDMA, uh for cable network right we can use different frequency okay the channel spectrum can be divided into different smaller uh, frequency band for example right here we have six frequency band so uh each uh each one of the network interface card can get one um, frequency band. The pros and cons is quite uh, obvious Obvious that uh, um, the pros, okay? Everyone can transmit because everyone has a frequency band, right? But uh, in this case, uh, the frequency band is, is, is much, much, much smaller, right? So uh, everyone, get, uh, for example, we have six uh, frequency band right here, right? So everyone get only one over six R bits per second, for example, if, if this is an RBPS. 
uh, cable, okay? And uh, for each of the band can only get uh, one over six R BBS, right? It is uh, one of the shortcoming. But um, the, the, the pros is that uh, you can use the channel whatever whenever you want, right? And of course, there are some idle channel because uh, the, the the second adapter does uh, does not one does not ch transmit any frame any signal out, okay? So uh, TD TDMA and FDMA is very simple because uh, easy to use, but uh, we need some coordinator to divide those uh, frequency spectrum to smaller frequency band and we need the uh, coordinator to help us to have those six network interface card to um, synchronize their clock to uh, coordinate their uh, transmission sequence something like that okay um, and that is the first class of um, mac protocol we call channel partition only okay we can divide the channel into smaller pieces using time slot or using frequency uh, code division. We'll talk about talk code division uh, next uh, chapter. Okay, that's the one the other way to divide a channel into smaller pieces. Okay, so allocate pieces to node for exclusive use, but we, we need a co coordinator to do so. Okay, that is one of the classes called put, uh, channel partition only. Okay, we'll talk about the third one first. Okay, taking terms. Let's go to here. Okay, taking term protocols. It is very straightforward. Okay, uh, one of the way is polling. That means in the subnet you you need a coordinator. Okay, right here it's called master. So master will spend some time to do polling to ask every nodes. Say, uh, for example, uh, do you have any data I want to transfer in next at uh, in next round? If yes. Uh, how many data you would like to send? Okay, you, the the master will do such kind of polling for each of the nodes in the network. Okay, uh, let's take a figure I, I draw here. For example, at the first round, only A and B would like to transfer some uh, frame. Okay, so after polling, okay, A will get some time slot to transfer A's frame. And after that, B will get the channel and send B's frame. And after that, that is the first round, okay? And the second round, the master will do polling again and see how many different nodes will would like to send frames, okay? For example, right here, if C and D says okay they they want to send uh, certain frames so take term okay c and take term d and that is the second run and so on so forth so on so forth in this case we we, we will not have idle frame because we have a master it will it will help the uh, all the other nodes to coordinate when you can send and how many uh how many bits you can send Okay, it will try to do polling. Okay, it it is very it is um much better than time slot, but you need a master right here to do polling. Okay, and we don't have idle frame right here, but it depends on uh the size of the 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 subnet because because if you have many many slaves in a subnet, the polling would cost. A uh, lot of time, right? So it is. Uh, we have polling overhead under this uh, mechanism. Okay, and the other in the other uh, the other problem is a uh, single point of failure. If the master crash, then no one do polling, right? So the slaves need another mechanism to uh, to choose uh, one of the slave as the new master. So that they can continue do polling and transmit uh, transfer those uh, frames. So this is a little. Uh, it is not the best solution, but it's one. It is one of the solution. 
And the thing about um, the Wi-Fi environment, and in Wi-Fi environment, we have access point and we have the um, uh, Wi-Fi nodes, right? So the access point is a good example that it can be the master and do polling. And we will talk about how Wi-Fi works uh, next chapter, okay? Uh, part of the Wi-Fi communication can, can use such kind of polling mechanism, okay? I simply just introduced some uh, basic concept in this chapter, okay? Tech term, polling is one of the way to, to uh, share one channel among uh, multiple network interface cards. Okay, uh, the other uh, taking terms protocol is called uh, token passing, or sometimes we call token rim. That means in this subnet, okay, we have a specific token T, okay? If you get this specific token, and then you can send your signal out. Then after you send your signal, your, your friend, Okay, you pass your token to your neighbor and so on so forth, so on and so forth. So only the, the, the network interface card who get the token can send friends out. Okay, and of course, um, they have to run certain um, protocol to generate the token. Okay, so we have token overhead. And again, Single point of failure, because if the if some uh, if one of the um, if one of the node crashes and the token disappear, so the all the other um, members in, the, in 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 this ring they have to uh, try to find some way to generate a new token, right? So and then pass the token and so on so forth, so on so forth, and of course there are some. Uh, Fairness problem in, in such kind of taking turns protocol. Uh, for example, if some uh, malicious uh, device, the malicious nodes, they just keep holding the token and will not pass its token to its neighbors, then there will be some problems, right? It, it is oblivious. Okay, so that is another concept called taking terms. We, we introduced two. Uh, two um, types, which is uh, polling and taking turns. But uh, as I mentioned before, uh, right now, channel partitioning or taking turns are not that uh, are not used in our uh, LAN network. It not not used in Wi-Fi or in Ethernet. Actually, in Wi-Fi and, Ether in, and Ethernet, we use random access um, MAC protocol. So let's take a look at um, random access. Okay. So uh, for taking terms or for uh, polling for um, channel partition, they usually, okay, I, I mean always, always there only one node can send signal out, right? But in random access protocol, um, when node has packet to send, the node will send the frame directly at full channel data rate r bit per second and no prior coordination among nodes if a node want to send and then it's sent and of course two or more transmitting nodes will cause collision so the idea of random access protocol and two the other protocols they are different two the other protocols they will need to coordinate with each other and try to that only one node can send at one time, okay? But random access protocol, if you want to send and then send, if collision happens and then we will try to find, try to uh, design some other mechanisms to deal with collision. For all the other two uh, protocols, um, taking terms and uh, division, no collisions happens, but in random access, collision happens. But we will talk about how do those protocols deal with collisions. Okay, so uh, next one, random access MAC protocol specify how to detect collisions and how to recover from collisions. 
Okay, there are some uh, protocols we will introduce right here. Uh, Aloha, slotted Aloha, CSMA, CSMCD, CSMCA, and actually CSMCD is used in Ethernet, and CSMCA is used in Wi-Fi. Okay, we'll introduce Aloha first. Okay, um, Aloha is a very old Mac protocol, but actually we uh, we, we will introduce it uh, first because it is. It's, much more more easier for you to understand how when the access protocol is designed okay so we have some assumption uh, maybe we take a we can take a look at this one okay assume we have three nodes one two three in a subnet okay and all of them implement slotted aloha so the word slotted means it is time division so right here you can see that uh, we have slot number one two three four five two nine so basically, uh, slotted Aloha need, need all those nodes to be synchronized, and they know when a slot begins. Of course, it needs some other mechanism to make all of these nodes to be synchronized, but um, that is our assumption, okay? That is our assumption. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, figure, okay? Node 1, 2, 3 at slot number 1, okay? And as we mentioned before, if one, two, three has frame one to be transmitted, and they will directly send the frames. So at the beginning of slot number one, node one send the yellow packet, and node two send the green packet, and uh, node three send the red packet. But as you expected, these three signals cause collision, right? Because in in, in, in the channel, only uh, two or more simultaneously send signals uh, will cause collision. So right here, we, we, we have this letter right here. C, C stands for collision, okay? But after that, okay, that is the interesting part of uh, slotted aloha. After that, node one, two, three, they will sense the channel and they will figure out, okay, there is a collision. And then at the beginning of slot number two, note one will roll a dice with probability P. That means the probability it will transmit after a collision. So uh, if you want to see, it's right here. Okay, it's right here. You want to see the the, the definition is right here. We have a probability of success. If it is success, then node number one will send the frame at the beginning of the second slot. But unfortunately, in this example, okay, in this example, P, uh, sorry, uh, node number one, okay, it rolls. Uh, the the a die, <coughs> roll the die, and unfortunately, the die says you cannot send in this run, and again, unfortunately, all of the three nodes cannot send under the probability of one minus p. Right. So at the beginning of slot number two, all three nodes decide not to transmit. At slot number two. So this slot becomes empty. That means idle, right? So at the beginning of number three, time slot number three, node one, he's lucky and he decided to transmit. But node two, again, want to transmit. And three, okay, with probability one minus p, Okay, it will not transmit at slot number three. So in this case, again, the signal of first pack of uh, yellow packet and green packet collides. So it, it does not success. But sometimes you, you know it is it is a problem of a probability probability. Okay, for some time slot, eventually, okay, only one of the nodes, okay has the probability P and decide to send the packet, send the frame. 
and all the other nodes decide not to send the print not to send the frame so that is s right here that means success and so on so forth so on so forth so every time when you send a packet uh, when you want to send the frame out you roll a die okay with probability with the probability p of success okay so it really depends on the probability okay for some time the channel should uh the channel will be empty like number five number seven number two and sometimes the channel could be collision number like number one number three number six but with certain probability only one of the nodes will send its frame out like number uh, slot number four number eight and number nine so let's say let's go back to the previous page okay we have assumption that all frames same size those frames are time divided into equal size slot okay no start to transmit only slot beginning nodes are synchronized if two or more nodes transmit in slot all nodes detect collisions so at the right hand side when nodes up 10 fresh frame transmit in the next slot if no collision and that's all no can send a new friend in next slot if collision nodes retransmit the friend with in subsequent slot with a probability p until success so it provides certain randomness so that not all the nodes will keep sending at each slot okay with the probability sometimes only one success and a success so the pros of this slotted aloha algorithm okay single active node can continuously transmit if at full rate of channel if, if you have only one node it can continuously send packet frames out okay this algorithm is highly decentralized because we don't have any one of the node to act as a coordinator because every node they simply just roll uh, roll die okay only slot in in need uh, a node need to be synchronized okay? and, and it is very simple algorithm the concept is it still cause collisions and the closing waste slot and sometimes we have io slots okay nodes may be able to detect collision in less than a time to transmit the pack to transmit packet that means um when when you send the packet out okay maybe at this time this moment this purple moment all three nodes knows know that uh we have a collision right now but time slot number one is wasted okay they, they do not stop immediately they have to wait until the second time slot begins okay and the concept is uh the, we need to do uh time synchronization okay that is slotted aloha okay let's take a look at how what, what is the efficiency of uh slotted aloha so uh right here suppose we have a node okay and this subnet and the probability is p okay so right here the probability of that given node has success in the time slot that means only one of the nodes roll the dice right probability p but all the other n minus one nodes okay they roll the dice and the probability of not successful is one minus p so that is given a node right second one okay for any node so basically that is it under o capital n either one success is okay and that one has probability p or the other one for unsuccessful that is one minus p so that is this number okay that is uh i think it i think in statistic textbook you, you know how to calculate all the, these values okay 
So uh, the maxima efficiency is that uh, if we can find a P star that maximizes the this 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 value, okay, this value. Uh, and uh, in the other situations that because we don't know the capital N, right? So let's take this assumption that N goes to infinity. So uh, it should be like this. This value, so simply just you can calculate this value, and the result should be this one. That means if in a thumbnail we have a lot of a lot of nodes, and they all use uh, slotted aloha, okay, and the successful rate is seventy, uh, sorry, thirty-seven percent. So that means. Um, only uh, only 70 sorry only 37 percent of the time slot is marked as success and the rest of 63 time slot are either collision or empty so that is a, that is the result Okay, so uh, as we can see that uh, the channel used um, is not that good. The, the, the utilization of such kind of um, protocol is not that good, but it is very simple. It's one of the earliest um, Mac protocol. Okay, because it's very simple. It is decentralized. Like, okay. The other one is called pure Aloha. Okay, we li would like to, uh, s to do a simpler no synchronized, no synchronization version of slot, slotted aloha. So basically, uh, we don't have slot. We don't have the concept of slot in pure aloha. Okay, that means if you want to send packet and then send, because we don't have slot, you can send at any time you want. Okay, so how do we analyze the the performance of uh, pure aloha? You take a look at this the yellow one. If you want to send the entire yellow frame, okay, if you, that means you have to succeed right here, right? Right. But if you want to successful transfer the yellow frame, okay, the within this time, the blue one, should not overlap it with the yellow one. And again, right here, in time, uh, we said that the, the beginning of the yellow um, yellow frame is T0, okay? And for T0 uh, plus one, that means um, right here, the purple one should not overlap with the yellow one, right? So we have two constraints. So all the other nodes should not transmit at T0 plus 1. So that is should not transmit for all the other one. Should not transmit for all the other one. So if you want the yellow one that can successfully transfer, transmit a frame, you should do this you should do this the green one should not start at between t0 minus 1 and t0 and the purple one should not start before t0 plus 1 okay that is this one okay so uh, if you take a look at the following pages okay it is quite simple. You simply just um, times all those uh, numbers. Okay, so this says the successful by a given node. That means this node can transmit and the other node cannot transmit. The other node cannot transmit. One of them, one of them is the green one. The other one is the purple one. So that is how to analyze the efficiency of 
pure pure aloha. And again, if you try, if you let the n goes to infinity, the efficiency of pure aloha even worse than the slotted aloha. So actually, uh, time synchronization is very is quite useful, right? It's quite useful. Okay, um, if you cannot comprehend these things, try try to take a look at the textbook. Okay, it has a very uh, nice explanation of uh, pure aloha and uh, slotted aloha. Okay, we stop right here because we will talk about this and may uh, late uh, in next next uh, next hour. Okay, is a uh, much more complex mechanism.